and welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery class. I'm going to go over some news, going to go over the markets and take a look at some of our indicators, see what is going on here this week. So uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, let's see, I'll let Sam in here and let me pull up the chat. Uh, then you can ask those and we can even pull up some coins if you want to do that. Uh, Joe's busy on some things and so going to uh, take over the class here. Uh, for now. So let's see, in the news, we have Alameda suing Grayscale over 9 billion locked in Bitcoin trust shares. So that's interesting and that's new. And of course, people are going after any of that uh, missing money. So um, FTX fleet claims Grayscale's improper fund freeze means that customers' cash has been lost. So we'll see how that plays out. I don't know that we need to unpack that much more than this. So, um, but more bad news for Grayscale. That's the bad news there because that is uh, holding quite a bit of Bitcoin. So, you know, as these things drift lower, it's going to entangle things more and more. And um, that is a concern is that we drop lower if this uh, bull flag does not play out. We'll look at that as well. But the, there is a head and shoulders that I want to keep an eye on because, you know, we still could see lower lows and that could mean more problems for a lot of these companies that are holding on by a string potentially. And so uh, let's see, Grayscale improper redemption ban. You know, as the lawyers dig into all this, it's going to... Yeah, a little bit messier, as I said. Yeah, we don't know exactly how that thing's going to pan out. Uh, one real quick thing I want to check on my end as far as the, okay, levels are good. Anyway, so let's see, FTX. So we'll keep an eye on that. I don't know that we want to go too much uh, deeper into that. And probably by now, Sam is realizing the, the depth of what's happened here and uh, what he's uh, in for. FTX further alleged, let's see, this is interesting. In the past two years, Grayscale has extracted over 1.3 billion in exorbitant management fees in violation of trust agreements. So that is interesting. And FTX said Monday's statement, if Grayscale had reduced those fees and allowed investors to withdraw their cash, then FTX shares would be worth nearly 90% more than now, at least 550 million. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's the news for today. I think the bigger news today, which we'll get to, is that the fears that interest rates are still going to go higher. And of course, Powell is speaking this week. And so we'll see what that comes out as. But he's already hinted that they're going to continue raising rates. So he saw a big dump this morning, which recovered. And we'll look at that also. Bitcoin pauses, death crash has formed. That's on the uh, weekly basis but uh this you know these death crosses are sort of overhyped here and it's good for news but i don't know that it uh it really is that important I, the other technicals are to me more powerful let's see history says stock market will do after powell speaks to congress all right that's interesting stock market was waiting for powell to begin his testimony to congress before making a move and now it's heading lower and um, <clears throat> yeah, so he may have spoken this morning. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. It's, you know, more of show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. But uh, the what I saw is that, you know, their news is that they're going to continue raising rates, as we said. So, all right, let's see what else we have there. And um, in the news, in terms of Bitcoin, I'll jump over to a monthly chart and just kind of see. So, yeah, the Powell warns Fed could get aggressive with rates hikes again. I posted something along these lines in our M3 active trader chat this morning. And persistent signs of inflation are forcing the Fed to contemplate more aggressive rate hikes. Yeah, that's not good. As we know, uh, you know, the future hikes have been priced in at 25 basis points, I would imagine. And anything more than that then uh, could see certainly any surprises would see the markets dump all around. And that is a sort of a theme today. I, there's a chart that I um, and uh, some TA have been looking at that could indicate more downside, major downside in the Dow here in the next 30 days, if not sooner. So, uh, and this would be the reason why the catalyst, certainly a surprise rate hike on the next meeting could certainly send things uh, quite a bit lower. 
Powell announced today that central bank likely to raise federal interest rates higher than previously thought at a faster pace than initially believed. Yeah. And, and I'm, I've been hearing rumors that wall street rumors that we could see seven to 8%, maybe 9% inflation uh, due to signs of persistent inflation. Now the, the other word for that is sticky inflation and that there have been several people talking about that, that they think it'll be sticky inflation and lead to a recession. Uh, a deeper recession. Although inflation has been moderating in recent weeks, process getting inflation back down to 2% has a long way to go and is likely to be bumpy. Uh, and uh, bumpy means uh, higher, sooner than lower. Okay, so let's see. Ultimate level is interest rate. Ultimate level of high rate hikes likely to be higher than previously anticipated. So this is pretty scary language here. I'm surprised we haven't seen more of a dump in the markets. And because we did at the beginning, right at 930, markets were tanking, but we've come right back up to hold at a support line, a key support level. And uh, so that's the big news of today. That and the uh, FTX grayscale is the biggest news that I see. And so uh, I think that's about all we need to digest. And I am checking the comments there, you guys, if anything you want to add to that. And uh, let's see, Ethereum against Bitcoin, not really relevant. B uh, Bitcoin ASIC manufacturer, ASICs are the mining machines, saw 82% revenue drop. Typically, the bottoms are marked by these miners going bankrupt. And so, or many of them, and certainly that's been happening, seeing a lot of consolidation. Uh, that being said, you know, no big surprise here. We've had, this is the monthly chart of Bitcoin that I've had drawn for months and we were watching this big bullish engulfing candle as we know which you know usually always signifies higher prices and we did push higher but this candle in january last month as i'm uh, sorry february the let me make sure i get these right january february february was just a, this is a spinning top it's a reversal candle in the candlesticks and that is rare that you'll see a monthly candle close exactly where it opened which was right at that 23,000 level and um so 23,200 right in there so it didn't uh, this huge bullish engulfing candle is suspect pushed right up to this resistance area and we've had a really hard time getting above that so right now as of now we have now a bearish engulfing candle the March candle bearish engulfing over February. And I do think it's uh, we, the favor, chance favors we go lower here, as I have had drawn. You know, if we can push up higher and there's a short squeeze, this is not a rally that would be based on massive retail buying, retail, you, me, and the public, or institutional buying other than for a short swing trade play up into this resistance area around 30,000. So these are the scenarios. And of course, we go into that deeper in uh, active trader tomorrow. But if we start to drift down into this, uh, this range, now these are not drawn to scale timeline wise, this would be faster. And I think we bottom by, you know, July has typically been when we kind of bottom and start to rally up. But to, to make it easier to see, that's how I've drawn that. Okay. And then on the overall scheme of things, the um, indicators, now we had a bullish engulfing I'm sorry, we had a bullish coffee candle and the ERI print in January, but uh, the TSI has yet to break back above 20. And that's really that key confirmation. And if not, you know, we could see a stumble here like in 2015. And again, we'll, un we'll pack that a little more in tomorrow's class, but uh, that could indicate lower lows uh, and at least retesting, potentially retesting the lows of the uh, this last four months here when we came down to um, around that 16,500 level, right? So in terms of this, now there is that CME gap we'll look at. And so, you know, look, this is, there's no easy way to say where we, what the possibilities are. 14K, I believe would be the low, uh, even if it just buried below that. We had been looking at 10,000 and just below 10K at one point, but uh, I don't see that happening, but then again, new information, new decision. If Grayscale loses a lawsuit or is forced to sell all its Bitcoin or a lot of its Bitcoin, could we'll see a big drop in prices. And then, of course, we also have that looming Mt. Gox 
liquidations of potential liquidations of Bitcoin. They have been uh, the release has been pushed back to September of this year. And uh, that's something you want to keep in mind, you know, wherever we are going into September and the anticipation, anticipation of mass selling, there are a lot of people that got their Bitcoin back, or some of it at least, and the average cost basis of around $400. So uh, they've been through hell holding it for 10 years. And I would imagine a fair amount of those sell. Uh, the other thing, another side of that that I want to mention is that the there were a lot of venture capital firms buying up claims to Bitcoin from people that had lost their Bitcoin. And the intention from the hedge funds is uh, more likely than not to sell it at open market, possibly hold long term, but they would have bought at a much considerably higher rate, let's say $10,000 per Bitcoin. So they're not going to risk too much of it going down. I helped uh, a friend of mine who lost, uh, had 3,300 Bitcoin that he lost in Mount Gox. And he asked, called me when he was approached by a VC offering to buy it. And he asked for my advice. And so, um, you know, that that's something to keep in mind, everybody. You know, these cycles do sort of resonate and rhyme and, and trade in similar patterns, but uh, these are times that we haven't seen before. So we'll continue to wait and watch and see if we can get that TSI back above 20. That would, to me, confirm that the bottom's in and we're going higher just based on the what we've seen in the past with our TSI ERI. And uh, let's just take a look here. We've got the RSI sort of turning back down again, right? It's uh, certainly angling down and it's not what we want to see unless it can retest on this level. So... You know, my, the short version of this is I think we see a dump here in March and then it rebounds fairly quickly yeah, and goes uh, starts going higher from April, May, June. Um, but we don't know yet. We do have the MACD turning higher following this line almost to the T. It's much like we saw this up here when it sort of peaked out, rolled over. Really, that cross here was the significant um, moment. And that's when I was telling people in January, really get out of these markets. So when we when this crosses, let's say that it's probably over toward this level, that would be June. And that's when I think certainly markets are going to really start pushing higher, breaking into that positive uh, area. So we'll keep an eye on that. Nothing really has changed there. We've got money flow, had a nice bounce out of this uh, region here. So that's good. And but not good enough money flow. Probably, you know, this is going to be a while before we break back above that trend line. And uh, so that remains to be seen. All right. What else? <clears throat> so we're just skimming along on some of these charts here, and then we'll look at some actual coins and projects. In the short term, I see the weekly is definitely bearish. And uh, here's that death cross that happened um, actually had two weeks ago. So that article is late. But let's open this up a bit. The death cross, big scary death cross is the 200 monthly moving average crossing over the, uh, sorry, the 50. I got ahead of myself crossing over the 200. And that's exactly where our bearish ERI signaled also. So uh, there's a lot of resistance right up here at that 200 week EMA, that purple line. And we also have what? We have the 50 day now coming down as resistance. And we have this line right along here where the prior top was around 25,000. So, you know, this is not a smooth sailing. We've got triple resistance right in here. So what we're watching right now at this point, and we also have support rising underneath. We have this trend line here, which was strong trend line up in this range. Of course, we had this dump, which came back here uh, almost an anomaly to get back into this range. And so pushing up. So we have the time to watch this. Um, convergence of events here. And so we have the bull market support band below it. We've got the 300 week moving average below it right at 19,000. And so that's also around where that CME gap is. So it's, um, you know, it's gonna, it's an epic battle happening right here. And you see it in a daily basis on the shorter timeframes and uh, creating a lot of great volatility for day traders, but not great for the rest of us. It's, we are in a holding pattern and very important that we stay above the bull market support band because, uh, as we've talked about, as that drops down below, it can really pull it down for weeks and not months at a time. And that's obviously not what we want. So uh, at any rate, um, you know, what happens next? I, it's hard to say. I think we had I think we pull in here 
based on what we're seeing on the RSI, that we come back down, probably retest this all important 40 level. You know, the 40 level was very important back here as resistance and support. 44 also meaningful, kind of right in this range. And so right in there, kind of a bounce out of that region. I think that's when we see the ultimate bottom. And again, that puts us kind of into that May, June area. So that's what I would be expecting. We have the Skask is pulling over. So overbought territory, you know, it's good to draw these boxes because when we get up in those areas, we, you know, these extremes, uh, then very likely we come all the way down and the other opposite extremes. If we look back into here in the red zone, came all the way down back here for a full cycle. These are normal market cycles. And uh, whereas these that don't quite get in the red zone don't always go down back to the opposite extreme. So we see that here, here, but the red zone goes to the green zone, to the red zone, to the green zone, you know. And so we are pulling back strongly from the red zone. Could we push up higher and retouch that here again? Certainly. But I will, this is one to watch, the Stochastics RSI. And of course, our trend strength indicator rolling over. We've got the uh, red TSI about to break the 80 line. So this on the weekly basis, I think that we're uh, we're bearish here. And this would, uh, we'll get to the daily. But I think if, if we, here's what I think happens. I think we kind of get a bit of a bounce and put in a right shoulder maybe for this head and shoulders pattern. It's hard to see on this chart, but then, then we start to drop into that lower zone, which um, that's going to be tricky because it puts us back down and in and or below that bull market support band. So, you know, I am uh, leaning bit toward bearish weekly for sure. And I uh, feel strong in that that's uh, what plays out. It's a little different chart, almost the same. Don't need to look at this. Here is uh, one more view of it on the uh, weekly basis here. Again, pulling back potentially that 19,000 level. And this circle I had just highlighted as a retest, very strong retest of this a prior attempt up here to break 25,000. So that proved to be too strong and we're pulling back. The question is how far do we pull back before we head higher? And again, if we can break up above this 25,300 level, because here it rejected, here it rejected. Both times we had an ERI in the vicinity. Usually it's the third or fifth time these break through. So that would suggest if we if we dip down a bit <clears throat> and then push up and we do push up above 25K, I think it's a pretty quick rise to 30 and then it rolls over again. And so, you know, how that fits our overall timeline, it messes it up a bit. So we have to be flexible and nimble. Uh, bottom line on all this would not be excessively long on anything right now. Here's that chart of the head and shoulders. And uh, we did have a buy on the hash ribbon indicator, but as we've seen, that doesn't always play out. So we'll go ahead and hide that. And really everything uh, that's to be seen here, you can see it just on what I've drawn on here, left shoulder. Here's the head. Uh, if we if we If we break down then, that puts us in a lower trending channel. If we bounce, we have this head and shoulders pattern, which also bearish. Okay, so I may do a video on that from uh, trading view later today. But uh, as you can see, this is not a bullish looking pattern here. And so if we get a, a breakdown here sooner than later uh, of this point, then that puts us in a lower trading zone range. Now, both can be beneficial because at least we know where our zones are, but the measured move on this takes us down to that 19,200 level. So I, I think it's pretty likely that that is what we'll see because a lot of uh, volume uh, and liquidity over in this range. If we pull up the, where is it? The, um, uh, the fixed uh, range volume profile here, just kind of see where that is likely to get pulled down to. I mean, this shows we're likely, we're most likely to come down back to the 16,600 level. That's where the most of the volume was. And the next likely range is right there at, down here at 19,100. So I think at the very least, we do come down to 19,200 area. Again, there's that CME gap uh, that, let's see, where do I have that drawn? This is the daily and somewhere uh, it is 
CME gap. Yeah. So this is also a daily and that is right in that 19,900 range. So 19,200, you know, it's all pretty close. Uh, let's move this down here. The actual CME got 19,930, but 19,200 kind of puts us down and we have that whole range based on what we just looked at there on the last chart, the measured move of the head and shoulders would put us down in that range. Okay. So that's why I have on here bull flag or bust. Well, the bull flag, you can see the flagpole here. And if this is the flag, the breakout, if we push higher, the measured move on that is going to take us right up to around that 30,000 level. So we have two you know, likely scenarios that uh, we just don't know which is which. Uh, now, somebody was saying that, well, aren't we in a bear flag here? I don't see it's a sloppy bear flag if there is one. But I think more the more macro structure here is bull flag. So if it can break up, if we push up higher above this 25K level, then again, I think we shoot up to 30. And again, if we can't hold 22,200, very important line in sand, I think come down in the 19,000s again. So, um, and maybe both. You guys might be saying, well, uh, well, which is it? Uh, you know, I think it could be, could be both. It could either dip down in here and then come up here, you know, and have some more work to do. But uh, there still is a gap up here that ultimately will be filled. Uh, so any questions, you guys are going a little fast. Uh, nothing inherently new. So I don't want to uh, you guys to feel that we're going too fast, but pretty simple stuff. And I know you guys are following along. Let's take a look at this chart on the daily. So we oversold a bit on the daily. Now, here's what concerns me a bit, though, still, is that we have this uh, uptrend higher highs. We have some bearish divergence here. So we have this, the lower highs on the TSI. And that's something we've seen play out. So right now, the signs are leading toward bearish um, in many of the longer term timeframes. But uh, it certainly looks oversold on the TSI. That doesn't mean we could not see a, another drop down. And now we also have this uh, other trend line here. So if we did come down, I would suggest we'd have support right around that 21,000 area. But, uh, you know, you're like, but Brett, you just said 19,000. Yeah, I mean, a bounce a bounce down in here is likely, but um, I don't know. I mean, I these head and shoulders patterns have a high likelihood of planning out. I'm leaning toward that. Left shoulder, here's the head. I think we do push up here, let's say around 24,000, and we inch around a bit, and then we come down harder and farther. That would be my guess. And, uh, but we'll want to keep an eye on things. Certainly not bullish. Uh, we had an ERI back here that did not confirm with a TSI. So keep that in mind. We want to see ERI and a TSI going green and above the 20 line. If you don't have that, it's not a valid signal. Now, these two bars, this, this bar segment here looks awfully familiar and similar. So anything could happen. And, I hate to say that it's almost become cliche. Anything can happen. We all know that anything can happen in this market, but let's take a look at this because it is pretty close. Let's see, where's my bars pattern? I think it's, it's down here. So if we look at this to, uh, it didn't take, I've got to click it again, I guess. So from this candle to this candle, you know, very similar to what we saw this exact dump here. And, um, you know, big dump candle kind of inching around, had a spinning top, have one right here. And so this is, this would almost exactly create that head and shoulders here. would get us right up to about this level, maybe push up and around and then come back over. Uh, so that 25,000 level is really going to be that a key marker for us just to slow down for a minute because any higher than that, and then it's looking more like a bull flag breakout. And but if it can't clear 25,000, then it's looking like the head and shoulders pattern we just looked at. Everyone got that? It's uh pretty straightforward, but that's what I'm watching for. And um, you know, you'll notice you don't look at a lot of Elliott waves, things like that. I there are certainly some validity to those those things, but I don't find um as much value in it. I like to keep it simple. But uh yeah, uh well, let's see, and uh, the um Silvergate collapse too. We've got to keep an eye on. I mean, that's the been happening and that's what spooked the market the other day. But yeah, Bitcoin traders eyeing 19K BTC price bottom, warn of a hot February CPI. Well, 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. That hasn't been released yet. Uh, we has a few weeks. Bitcoin race. So, so you know, it, it's the paintbrush. The paint strokes are there that we we had lower, and that's what I think is uh, more likely. But I don't know. I, there's a, still a little spidey sense that we see some big crazy news or gray swan event that really pushes things down. And we, we, I just don't know that we've seen the final capitulation. So that's kind of, that's my underlying concern with all of this, but uh, we will wait and see. I, I, I am reassured by our TSI on the monthly going green. And um, so we'll keep everyone posted on that. Interesting. Former Goldman Sachs exec, fastest growing economy on earth. Uh, oh, Raul Paul. <laughs> it's funny. Well, I guess he was technically Goldman Sachs here and now he's a YouTuber. But um, I kind of take his comments with a grain of salt because he has his investments all over and his, his news is probably somewhat self-serving. He's a big Ethereum bull. So uh, I'll read that later. I don't want to take up time with this now. But um, anyway, more FUD in the wind. And let's see. So with that, you guys, why don't we take a look at some uh, movers? And again, if you are in the crypto mastery, then uh, feel free to throw any coins out you want to look at. And if you're in M3 Active Trader, we go a little deeper in those classes tomorrow. If you're not in M3, you can learn more about that about at uh, moonstream.io slash M3. And we deep dive in and we have our own basket of coins, things we look at and watch. Uh, this class is primarily for the crypto mastery indicators and having a look at uh, what's moving. Uh, the trend indicator I haven't commented on or the signal because we are going down and to the right and red. But we could pull up this here. I've got sort of my own list of coins that I watch. Everything's mostly in the red, just skimming through to see if we see anything in the green. And so, you know, Polygon Matic, trying to kind of put in a base here around $1.12. You know, this uh, is a great project. Do, do like this here. The whole market is uh, not doing much. We have an ERI. TSI hasn't done much. If the TSI can get back above green, one thing I'm going to do is set an alert on this. And my favorite coins, I like to choose once per bar close because I want to know every time that TSI crosses up the 20 line. That, you know, I, it's sometimes enough when it turns red to green at the bottom, but I really need to see this above the 20 line. Tried to get above here, couldn't quite make it. It's above the 20 line that gives that the momentum signal. It's going to run higher and that would be a worthy trade to uh, get into. Uh, okay, Sam says, do you like, still like OGN? Well, let's pick up, uh, look up OGN. You know, it, it's pre-revenue, it's early. I really like the founders and what, you know, the story, but have they figured out how to make money yet? They have not. And so, but they didn't, they didn't at YouTube for a while either. And it's by one of the original engineers and the, the founder of YouTube. So I think, uh, yeah, they'll, I think they'll do it. It's really the question you're asking is, is is your capital still best placed in something like OGN? And uh, that's always a hard question. You hate to sell something that you believe in because invariably it will run and run like hell when you're not looking and you didn't buy back into it. I've had that happen. It's, it's, a, it's a strange phenomenon and I'm sure you guys can relate. Last summer when Coinbase 2021, summer of 2021, when Coinbase locked me and a lot of other people out of their accounts for no good reason, and it was two months before I get back in. Finally, I got back and I had some OMG and uh, let's just pull up OMG here. And it had gone down, that and all the coins value had gone down 25,000. This is not the right one. And uh, so I was just, I said, I sold it to stop the bleeding and put it in something else. And OMG rallied for some st stupid reason. It was, uh, yeah, as soon as I sold it, it was right back. At any rate, I sold it and then it rallied and then who knows, but actually I don't even want to look at this because this has been a, a tricky one and uh, I've always lost money with OMG. So let's not even look at it. Um, the question was about OGN origin protocol. And so this is kind of hard to find. Let's see. I thought it was on main exchanges now. Yeah, it is. Okay. It's not hard to find at all. 
scratch that. Usually when you pull it up and it's just saying Bitfinex and some of these others, uh, it, uh, but then I saw it was on Kraken and remembered it's also on many of the main exchanges like Coinbase. So uh, let's pull that up and look at this uh, OGN. Well, it's broken out of its downward trending channel. So that's encouraging, although there's a, a deeper channel here that uh, probably has not yet broken out of, but I would keep an eye on it. I mean, this is one of those that they'll figure out some cool things. They're tied in. Investors like to invest in proven entrepreneurs. And so I think it's uh, Yu Peng and uh, I want to say Gary Chen. I, I'm probably getting that wrong, but the lead engineer and one of the founders of YouTube formed this. Uh, go to their website, really cool product um, or concept. I don't know if they have a product yet, but here's here's all we need to see. And I'll turn off this ERI here. Okay. And probably should turn our radar on all these. So that, um, you know, we have this upward trending channel there. It has uh, hit resistance. So the in this channel, as we have it there, I mean, honestly, I would not, I wouldn't buy any here. But what we really want to see is a higher low and it's starting to create a new trend channel. So the thing to do here would be put an alert at $1.70. And why $1.70? Because that would syndicate, indicate, combining show and indicate, and came up with syndicate, sorry. That would show that uh, we're clearly out of the trend channel and above this recent wick high. Because these things can and will fake out and they lure all the buyers in. What we'd like to see on OGN, Sam, is this a higher low right there like that. Okay, and that that is possible here. I mean, these are the ideal kind of scenarios when they break out of the channel. And so uh, if you have some, I'd hold it, but I'd probably have a stop loss here below this 11 cents. Then again, if you're down in it significantly, probably just better to hold on to it. It's just the problem is if, if this doesn't break out, then it's going to roll down and the projected, you know, how low could it go? Well, unlikely to go to zero, but it's already at 0 0.12 cents. So it could come down in this point. It could lose half its value here uh, or more in this trend channel if things get worse. So keep an eye on that. I mean, in smart investors, you know, at least lighten your load. I can't give individual investment advice, but say selling half of the position here with the intent of buying it back protects you in the sense that if it pushes higher, you're still in the game and you can rebuy on the retest. See, this is how they usually break out and come back and retest. So uh, the radar is mixed, just uh, almost no volume, though. That's the other part of this. So it's, it's, it's uh, not one really TA is going to do a lot for us. Uh, Jay says, anytime I sell anything low, it literally pumps the next day like clockwork. Yes, Jay, uh, next time we, we need a pump, we'll let you know. You know, it, it's, it's a remarkable thing that, um, and it has to do with the group psychology. Wyckoff talked about the um, composite man, which includes women, of course, and just the overall, uh, you know, I was going to say the overall AI, the the concept of all of us combined in psychology, they call it groupthink, and typically bad decisions are made in those situations. But but with us, we're not really comparing notes necessarily one on one. There's chat rooms, etc. But it's 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 a unique phenomenon that people you know tend to sell at the same times, and then the markets, the AIs, and the market maker algos, they definitely watch that in aggregate. And there may be other signals. I've always sort of wondered if they earmark certain traders as a proxy for uh, doing the opposite. So, Jay, may, we may not be entirely wrong. Uh, I was one of them for a while. And we've all been there and had that, uh, you know, you have to get to a point where you unlearn the bad habits. But, you know, uh, you know we tend to buy high and sell low. It's our nature. But that's exactly wrong. So utilize the uh, indicators, Jay, and um, I know you've been you're doing well in Active Trader and uh, are doing that. So it's just uh, a lot of this is you can learn these things by watching, but until you really are trading with it with some real money and watching it intently, 
you know, paper trading is great, but the reality is people develop some bad habits that way. They'll put on a bigger trade than they should in a paper trade and they're not really watching it. And if it works out and they're like, great, that's awesome. And then they carry those bad habits over and careless habits over with real money. Uh, so don't do that. And so let's just take a look at this here. If I kind of, well, it's interesting. It has the makings of a new upper trend channel. Sam, one OGN. Tell you what, keep an eye on that. Keep me posted. I have my alert set, but if we, if once we determine it's in a new uptrend, we, that's when you want to trade it on the way up. All right, what else is going? We have, well, meme, uh, I'm not, that's not even worth looking at. We don't have much up today. We have XRP, which is kind of in this still ascending wedge. Uh, th this is going to really fully depend on news of the legal battle. And uh, there's been a number of false rumors and spikes and drops. So, uh, but similarly, and you can see, I have my alert set up on Ripple here, 0.44. We'll pull up our indicators in a minute to see if we can see anything. But as soon as it breaks out above this trend channel, you'd want to know about it. Because if, if and when they win uh, the case, or is, at least is resolved, because that way there's less uncertainty, Ripple will probably undoubtedly run again but it's just a matter of when so with that question to answer what do we have we have the eri double print on the eri i like that but what are we waiting for what do we want to see we want to see the confirmation here of this tsi above 20 so that's the trigger and so if that happens then on XRP, then, you know, then probably push up out of this zone here. We want to see the rest of this go green also. Really low volume, though. Just kind of waiting, pending the SEC uh, lawsuit outcome. Let's see. Uh, I'm just going to run through. I skim through my list. Look at some. I've got Uniswap, green, but just a lot of choppiness in these markets. Uh, Mutable X has been looking good lately. So actually... Uh, we had sort of put on a paper trade here on Immutable X and would have been stopped out, though. It was tricky, you know, who's that uh, they'll pull it down in a stop hunt, come right back up into the zone, and then they're pushing higher on it. So, you know, getting stopped out, not a bad thing. Just to uh, make sure, you know, if you still like the trade, you can get back in. And I don't know that I like it that much. ERI, but TSI is getting a little overbought. What I would do here is look at a weekly chart. Now weekly, I'm surprised I actually, it's a bit overbought on the weekly. So that uh, gives me some concern. If we go back to the daily here, well, it's the signal lines trying to get to green and it looks like it's just about there though. And so if we get a signal crossover to the green area, I think we do see another push higher on Immutable X. Nice uh, rounding bottom here. Let me just kind of get that formulated. Okay, so uh, keep an eye on Immutable X. You can set alerts on the signal line going green. Okay, and so that would be good to know. And then uh, we watch the, the mantra is ERI, TSI, Signal, and Bell. When they all go green, you're in business. So the midline here on the trend indicator is going green, you guys. So in the next couple of days, you probably see a key and a bell. If you see the bell and the signal line is green, then I think we've got a really good you know, little push higher on it. The only downside is that TSI is getting a little overbought, but as we know, it can stay there for multiple days, like a week even. Let's look at this here, what happened when we got up in this range, right? It's still, when it broke above that blue zone, it just continued pushing higher. So Immutable X is one to watch. All right, so with that in mind, let's see. Okay, that's another AI coin there. Let's take a look at the scanner and now we'll go from there. Any questions, you guys? Uh, all right, let's see. Ajax, yeah, we can do that. We'll do that first. Oops. All right, it's on Binance. So all red on the radar. And how old is this? It's uh, relatively new to Binance, but it um, uh, looks bearish to me. Jay, I would not be buying this. Bear, uh, bearish ERI, TSI red heading down, signal red. This is all red, so that's no, no bueno. Um, now, looking at this, 
pattern, however, you know, it, a bit of consolidation was is not a bad thing. It may be in under accumulation. It just uh, these things tend to, you know, do what they kind of. You know, so you, you may be in a new consolidation pattern and waiting for a breakout. Uh, but with uh, I, you know, you want to see this green ERI TSI right now. It's heading back down. The question is how low. You know this range could be come back down to this the 40, 35 cents and then push higher so you could have that on the weekly basis also a bit overbought uh it's so it's, it's bearish at the moment but keep an eye on it okay ftm sure we can look at ftm is that sam says ftm so just pull it up here on uh, binance okay well we have a bullish eri we did not have a TSI confirming on this one. Here we did. Again, I want to really emphasize to you guys to watch for that TSI ERI combo. One without the other is not the same. ERI here, a day later, TSI went green and it shot up. Doesn't look like much, but base hits these days in this market, 28%. It's a sharp stick in the eye. Here we have the TSI, or sorry, the ERI, but no TSI confirmation. So it's non-signal and everything else is red. So Phantom Coin, uh, you know, look, it's got a rest sometimes. It's not looking great at the moment, but, you know, we keep in mind, we, since November, when we re-recommended it, uh, somewhere in this range, it dropped a little bit, but uh, it still was up 136%. And from the beginning of this year, I thought it was like 500%, 234% uh, that uh, fandom was going, it was gone, was gone up here. Sorry. Sometimes I try to talk, move my mouse uh, and look at charts and uh, you get to that. It's kind of like rubbing your stomach and patting your head at the same time. Yeah. It's harder than it sounds. Um, so we don't see a whole lot here, guys. So Phantom Coin is it's resting. It will run again. You want to you want to see you want to see ERI TSI turn and then everything go green. If you're holding it, you know you can hold on to it. But uh, the weekly TSI is rolling over, so I would I would expect more downside on this. How much more downside? You ask. I'm glad you asked. I would say at least down around 35 cents, the golden pocket uh, pullback on the Fibonacci. And, um, you know, so not too much farther down. It's just that the weekly TSI is just dipping over. So I'd say time wise, could be a couple more weeks on that uh, turnover. Yeah, it looks a little ominous there, to be to be honest, because the last time we saw TS, uh, TSI rolling over in a weekly with Phantom was back in January of last year when it just free-falled. So well, I, hate to, I hate to even point this out, but, you know, we all have a very large macro head and shoulders forming. Oops, why did that happen? Okay, copy and paste there. And so it, it, it's, it, I, I'm not gonna say it qualifies, but it can, it could. It's kind of a weak shoulder and we have this area in here, but you know, it, it, it's the whole overall diagram. Uh, however you draw it, but this is ostensibly a large head and shoulders pattern. So phantom uh, I'd be careful with because if it comes back down to the retesting or about 14 cents, I mean, this, it's a great project, but um, you know, these markets are all speculative. If it comes back down and that's a, <laughs> yeah, be careful with phantom coin. If you don't have any, I wouldn't buy any here. We could have a 95% potentially not 95% drop here still like we saw pre-2021, that would be a great place to buy it. That's the good news. As, as many of you know, uh, one of our Moonstream picks was Phantom Coin back in January of 2021. We re-recommended uh, it originally back in May of 2020, but just for 2021, it went up 18,000%. This, this shows a little bit more over 20,000%. So 
200x. So uh, that's the deal with Phantom Coin. Uh, keep an eye on that, but not looking very good at this point. So, all right, let's see this crypto pairs. I'm going to come in here and modify that a bit. If you guys have any other questions, let me know. Okay. This is, um, where's that button, you guys? It's always a little bit tricky to find the, uh, how to customize this. Filters right there. On uh, the fibs, how do you know where to put the 0% on the bottom or the top? The zero goes where you're starting from. Okay, so back to that. So if we were in with the move that just ended, so where you're starting from and then the, the end of it is where the most recent high or low is. And in terms of where exactly to put it, you want to put it at the extreme of the wick, the total price and uh, not the candle body. Trend lines should be candle bodies. Uh, Fibonacci's you're going to want to go to the exact low of the low. So right there, you know, reasonably close. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact to the penny, but, uh, and then I'll extend it out so we can see where we likely pull back to. So here I would suggest phantom coin comes back down into this 35 to 34 to 34. Try, try that again, 34 to 35 cent range. And then who knows, but if it's, if this is playing out, then we could come back down lower, lower, but that's how you draw the Fibonacci. Uh, there is an indicator that does an automatic trailing Fibonacci. So auto fib retracement right there. And um, let's see, what did that do? Hmm. Interesting. Would not have drawn it that way, but it took this low from back here to this high. Um. I don't think that's accurate. You know, you would either, this should have, the auto fib should have drawn it from low to here, not over to here. If, if they could have gone from here to there, but this auto fib is uh, unusual that it would draw it that way. I've never seen that before. You would go that way or from the top here. To the bottom. Some of these are turned off, by the way, too. So I just, uh, the, when you're using those longer time frames, you could turn on a 3.82, 236, 618. But, um, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't like to get too much noise in these. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. Turn those off. 0.5 is usual retracement, 50%. The golden pocket is 0.618 to 0.65. 0.786, meh, I don't really use it. All right, uh, so hopefully that answers your question there. Okay, try to sort out this crypto screener here one more time. Uh, the column setup, yeah, that would make sense. I think, did they change that icon? I can never remember where that damn thing is. So the exchanges, uh, we'll do that high and low. I don't really care about uh, price technical rating. I do want uh, volume, volume change. There are instances where you want to look at the biggest change in volume, but this is all I want to do right now. All right. And then for the exchanges, we don't need to have all of them. We don't need Uniswap. We'll just put a few. So we'll do Binance. I'll do Binance US, most, the ones most of you guys use, we can do Binance US and KuCoin and we'll get most of them. Uh, where's KuCoin? It's hiding right there. Boom, okay. So we're gonna short, uh, short those. <laughs> I've been shorting so much, I wanted to say short. We'll short all of those. Now, uh, so let's see, strong buy category. Well, let's see. I don't know about this one. Super cells, not familiar with that. Don't even, I'm not going to consider that. That's a weekly, but uh, brand new, all red. Why it's a strong buy, I'll never know. Let's ignore that. Sysix here. So no, Loom, I don't see anything there. I'm going to kind of see if I see anything I recognize. So Edge, 
ROG. These are not coins you want to be playing around with. In this bear market, this tool is a lot less effective, right? Because the, the bigger coins are just in the doldrums and going sideways. So this is often a time where I'll look at the strongest sells because those are selling off the hardest. You know, we have Immutable X. There's a good one. We already talked about that. That's a writer down or keep it on your radar. And uh, let's see, what are some of these other ones here? I'm not familiar with Everscale, but let's put our indicators on. That's what we're here for. Okay, there we go. Spidey Sense comes through again. Well, never heard of it, but look at this. Uh, we had the ERI, but we had this nice TSI turning up above 20. We're a little late, but not necessarily because we don't have a green signal, which is about to happen. And uh, so there you go. I don't know what this project does, but I would watch it because we got a little green coming in on the midline. Not sure if you guys can see that. We see the midline has gone red to green. So what you want to watch for is if it turns, you know, if it stays green and you get a key and a bell and you get that signal to go uh, green, that's one to potentially buy. And that's on KuCoin. Now, anything on KuCoin is going to pump all that margin. So right in here, you're starting to see that thing heat up a bit. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. Right. So let's see back last time we saw a key bell signal was right in here. And that thing went up a thousand percent. That's a 10 X. All right. Well, Hey, let's, let's have a look at that a little deeper ever coin. uh flip a coin ever scales it so let's see all right 163 on the total rank not terrible it's had a, a nice nice run here what do they do layer one okay interesting i haven't heard of it fifth generation one of the most technology advanced blockchain networks and is not a marketing exaggeration <laughs> wonder who writes these it's like you know if you say uh, the dog is not chasing the cat what do you picture you picture a dog chasing the cat so and that is not a marketing exaggeration it means it's an it's exactly it's a marketing exaggeration uh so <laughs> anyway everscale incorporates all of the blockchain innovations and concepts recent years versatility helps develop decentralized hub for lots for lots of blockchains this person barely graduated english Lots of blockchains and resource demanding applications such as game D5 microstation. So I've got the native token. Okay, it's the simple exchanges. What makes it unique? Perfect. Uh, let's see. Dynamic multi-threading and sharding technology. It sounds interesting. Blockchain consists of a master chain and multitude of shards called work chains. Okay, well, I, it does sound interesting. It's layer one, got some cool tech. And uh, world scale. So this is good, 60,000 transactions per second. So that would rival and be um, comparable to like a Solana. I think Solana was 50,000, allegedly. Or was it 500,000? I think it's 50,000. So I think Ever is one to keep an eye on. It bridges with Ethereum, Cardano, BNB, Polygon, Avalanche, Tezos, a couple others. And uh, okay, who's the team? 200 people, good network. And uh, all right, well, look, we may have found a gem here. I mean, I don't know, see, Everscale and CBDC. I like the name, the branding is good. It can ever scale, can continue to scale. Rare that you see good branding these days. Uh, so, um, you know, central bank digital currency is what they are, how they, I, I'm going to look into that further. However, Right now, I just want to look at this thing a little bit farther back and with our indicators. So since we're looking at KuCoin, how far back does it go? We wanted to find, that's relatively new. It would seem if we go to gate IO, that's probably where it started a little bit farther out back in March, 2022. So... I don't know, you guys. I like I like the what uh, I'm seeing here. 
<clears throat> in this chart because and this is a lot of just what this tells me is this was an ICO and they didn't dump it immediately. I, I should double check that, but um, you know, everything sold off in 2022. But one of the most simplest lines here to just gauge whether sentiment has changed is that. And it pushed up. I, I imagine it, it's new, but KuCoin usually offers margin trading. So that's why these things run so much. And, uh, and so this is certainly one to watch and it, it pumped, it dumped, you know, they took profits and now we're seeing it inch higher again. Now this is a daily chart, TSI is green. A little bit overbought on the weekly TSI, but that's okay. Uh, well, we've got an ERI is bearish. Darn it, because you want, you know, you don't want to have conflicting signals here. Um, yeah, what we should also do have at least our 21 day EMA. So I, I, you know, as a pullback point, did it go down to that? Not yet, but the EMA is rising. So this level right at about 10 cents, nine cents, I would imagine that holds. And if it can't hold, that's your stop loss. But um, going back to a, uh, we, a daily, checks off a lot of our boxes here. ERI check, green, TSI check. Uh, it's above the 21 day moving average. And we like to call this kind of looks like a rocket's forming there. If it closes toward the end of the day, I bet you if that looks like a rocket, it's about to shoot up again. So put you guys put it on your radar. I mean, there you go. And if it goes green here and we get a key on the TSI, then I would be hold you know hold on to that potentially for a while because that sucker went up 10x already, and we just we saw that with Solana back uh, in August of 2021 when it started to break out it ran hard. So um, I'm going to uh, add that to a watch list. Cool. All right. Well, um, let's see. No more questions. We're coming up on the hour. I have another call in 15 minutes. I've allowed a little extra time. I guess we could pull up a few more. If you guys had any more you want to look at, but that uh, Everscale, definitely want to watch that. Let's see, QTZ, uh, not looking terribly interesting to me. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, just not feeling it. So... Not a bad chart here on uh, TrustFi, but let's see. I'm not going to open all of these up, but I'll zoom out a bit. It's overbought on the TSI, so it's a no-go. Me there at pay. Uh, just kind of going sideways. Let's see. A lot of wicks. These wicks tell me there's just a lot of um, in this exchange low liquidity. Mexk or Mexc. I'm not gonna, I don't like to trade on these. Uh, let's see, the GRT double short is, is pushing, which means GRT is going down. But that one there, right, That there's a rocket right there, you guys. I mean, it's not on the 21 day EMA, it's right on the shorter term time frame here. Why didn't that show? More like sitting on the nine, but those can work. Uh, but it's overbought on the TSI, not a lot of trading volume. This is not the underlying either. But the graph selling off a little bit, not much. Huh. And this is more oversold. I'd be watching for this to turn and go higher. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Uh, okay, GRT just did. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Jay. It's funny. Uh, let's see, Loom, these topping tails just tell me they're, they're dumping it when they get any volume into it. So it's sort of pumping and dumping it. Uh, MakerDAO, let's see. It's a bit too far away from the 21-day EMA for me. I like to I like to get it right at support. And it's overbought on the TSI bearish yeah, ERI. So you, you're seeing how you guys can uh, flip through these pretty quick. So here, I think we're done here. What I want to talk to you guys about, though, that's kind of exciting I'm pretty excited about it. I was spent some time this morning watching uh, some video uh, from an outfit that builds algorithmic trading modules, and they um, have resources to do that. Uh, you know, trading bots included, but a more sophisticated algo. 
that could could you know both be a scanner and uh, an auto trade these that have the unique combinations of our main indicators so you know for example eri you know above the 21 and 50 day moving average tsi going green uh, signal green and just adding to the position each time we get a, another signal this is actually a good example so imagine if we had the an algo running and it said all right buy this if you know let's say above 21 and 50 day moving average and eri and buys some and then buys more when tsi goes green and then buys more when the signal goes green buys more when the bell triggers and then has criteria for selling that like hitting the upper bollinger band which would have gotten us out right here maybe a little early but uh better early than late and just does that all day long and over you know thousand coins or the top 200 market cap coins so yeah um well we're looking into it probably take a little while to figure it out but uh and actually somebody uh messaged me he was not in this group here but one of our students an active trader reached out and said that they're a programmer and they'd love to work with us on uh, kind of creating the super tool as it were which would be the combo of these and some other parameters so anyway hopefully that's of interest to you guys uh, all this trading stuff is fun and but there's only so many coins you can watch at a time and so having this automated into a, an algo would be great not necessarily a trading bot i don't want to get into wiggles and buy buy and sell 100 times a day but uh, more like a hedge fund position trading so anyway uh well that's all we have time for thanks everybody and um, so if you're in active trader we'll see you tomorrow we'll dive a little deeper into this we'll look at our basket of coins if you're not yet an active trader you can learn more at moonstream.io slash m3 and uh most of you are in m3 here and uh it's quite a bit of um favorable comments on that page so there you go no hard pitch but if you want to dive a little deeper and using these signals and also commentary deeper dive into things uh you can join there we have a limited number of new spots open uh we really don't do uh opening that very often so anyway you guys i'll see you tomorrow same time and let's uh see what's going on and um see if we can't find some opportunities but uh, i think we found a decent one today all right everybody take care i'll talk to you tomorrow